Hey Fairfax, JR here. Um, I was asked to put together a little video to update you all on what's going on here, and I just wanted to give you a little piece of what we've been doing in the class uh, through this past summer and into this fall. Uh, we studied the Gospel of Mark for about six months. I wanted to share with you um, maybe perhaps some of the stuff that the class has learned as they laugh behind me. Um, and uh, I hope this is... Um, this shows some, some fruit that's been going on here with this discipleship class that I've been having. Uh, I just have a couple questions. First, what did you learn about Jesus in our studies that you were not so much aware of before? Well, to start with, he doesn't want to be, he doesn't want any fame from the things he's doing. Okay. And then in Mark 9, when Jesus goes up to the mountains with his, his three closest followers, Peter, James, and John, he also sees Moses and Elijah up there. And when Peter, James, and John start to question about Jesus, God appears to them and says, This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. And they sort of like step back and be like, Well, where did that come from? Okay, what was the significance of God saying that about Jesus? It lifts him up above anything. And um, this makes us realize that Jesus is the only important one, and he is, our, he is the Son of Man, and he is our Savior. Awesome. No one Good before. Um, and Mark, what about the parable of that, um, while Jesus was king of the Jews, it wasn't just the Jews, it was like for all the nations and stuff, and he used the example of uh, mustard seed grown into a tree, and the branches being like the gospel of the birds, which the Gentiles like coming onto it and stuff. Excellent. Good. In Mark 11, um, with the fruit on the fig tree, how the fruit represent no, I the fruit on the fig tree represented the lack of fruit of the religious leaders, and it showed that Jesus was cursing the religious leaders because they were not faithful to their position, and they were abusing their position as well. You okay? Yeah, well, the story in Mark 10, uh, verses 17 through 31, tell of the rich man. It really stood out for me, as I really think it connects with the people of today, uh, where power and wealth really rules uh, a lot of households. Uh, I can really relate to this uh, in a sense of having a lot of valuable items in my house uh, from a worldly point of view. Uh, as a few of you might know, I'm actually a record collector and have been for a few years now. Uh, some that are maybe just worth a couple of pounds, but some are actually worth over, over a hundred. And a lot, a lot of times before I would take a lot of pride in but just recently I had a conversation with one of the girls from my church um, over a text message basically saying that I would quite happily give up all my records if it meant having something more, uh, helping others in need and uh, just having that e eternal life in God's glory. It's just the uh, suffering and the uh, pain he took to show the people, how he was trying to get them to get faith in him, mm -hmm. and how his faith would well, basically rescue them, and how that's about it, but faith, you just got to show faith in him and he'll save you. Great. He wrote to me on Monday morning that really, I told him my emails from back and I said I actually started tearing up a little bit when I read the email because of what he said. It's such a simple phrase. He said, I know that's what, what's missing in me is Christ. And then he said, I'm ready to follow Jesus. That's it. And so Lee, I ask for your good confession. Do you believe that Jesus is the son of the living God? Based upon that confession, <coughs> I will now baptize him into the kingdom. All right, Lee. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let's applaud for our new brother.
That's just a very quick report here. Um, Daisha didn't want to be on video because she did not have makeup on. So, but she's going to want to put a video together for you as well to show you the work that she's been involved with. Uh, but that's it. It's just a small piece. We have things going on almost every night of the week. And there's even a couple uh, families um, of unbelievers who we are starting home studies with. So. There's, there's a lot going on. God is definitely at work. Um, thank you for your support, your continued support for us. Um, I want you to know that the resources that you are giving us are proving to be fruitful for the kingdom of God. So please uh, pray for Peterhead, pray for the city. You can see it there behind me. Um, and we really look forward to seeing you soon. We'll be there in July. We'll see you there, and I think we're going to bring some of these Scottish folk over with us. So we're really looking forward to that. And uh, that's it. Looking forward to it. Hope you guys have a good Sunday. Love you.